Hey everybody, good afternoon, it's Thursday. Uh, my name is Sherry Seligson, I'm an Apology of Science author and homeschool mom, and I'm here to do some more fun science activities, and we're gonna talk about some, um, some nutritional stuff today, continuing our discussion about nutrition and um, our bodies. And um, we are actually very close up right now and in my kitchen because um, I wanted to show you some stuff we're going to be doing here, plus I've got some stuff on the stove we're going to do. Because we're going to have some fun today, we're going to make some homemade gummies, and um, nutritional gummies, and vitamin gummies. And before we do that, I see as you guys are jumping on, I want to review a little bit from yesterday, because we talked about digestion having occurred in our mouth. That's the first place the digestion occurs, and we break down our food mechanically or physically by using our teeth. Remember we made our fun little giant mouth that we use to talk about the different shapes of our teeth and how they're important in breaking our food down mechanically or physically. And then we talked about the chemical breakdown and then in um, using our saliva. And then I talked about the importance of taking care of our teeth and remember how I stuck a piece, it was a small rock, and that rock was limestone. Well, and that's calcium carbonate or lime, which is some of the major components of our teeth and how we have to take care of our teeth, particularly not exposing them to lots of acid. Well, I had this soaking in vinegar overnight, and can you see, this is what's left of that rock I stuck in there. Just It was much, much bigger. And you can see that the water is colored now because it, the vinegar acid dissolved a bunch of that calcium carbonate. And so uh, we need to be careful with uh, caring for our teeth. And so um, I just wanted to show you guys that's what happens to that stuff after it's been exposed to lots and lots of acid. So we're gonna change gears and, and start talking today about some what we call micronutrients. We talked a little bit about macronutrients a couple days ago when we made homemade pasta and we talked about um, the various proteins, carbohydrates, lipids or fats and nucleic acids and how those are in our food. But we also have important micronutrients that we need as well to keep our bodies running well. And those are vitamins and minerals. And so if you've ever um, had a muscle cramp, let's say you were exercising a lot and um, really being um, just, just exerting yourself a lot, and the next day you may have a cramp in your muscle, and that's because your muscle might be low in a mineral called potassium. And so just simply, Grabbing a banana, these are pretty yucky looking bananas right now because we haven't been to the store. But anyway, um, you can just grab a banana because bananas have a great deal of, of potassium in them and your body will utilize that and it will keep you from getting muscle cramps. And so we, it's important for us to utilize our, um, our diet, have a wide variety of fresh foods to get those vitamins and minerals that we need to keep our body running well. Vitamins are essential. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk a little bit more about vitamins as I start to make these homemade gummies. And we'll talk a little bit about how you can adjust them to the, the kinds of gummies you would wanna have for your house. And so it's a very simple recipe and um, using stuff that you might have at home, maybe one or two weird items or something, but you can adjust it also based on what your needs are. And so I'm gonna start off with a third cup of water and I'm going to add to that a tablespoon of honey and a teaspoon of lemon juice. So as I'm measuring this out, I just wanna talk about some of the vitamins. Vitamins are super important. They help protect our, our skin, our, our bone. They help strengthen our bones. This is gonna take a long time. So they strengthen our bones, they, um, our muscles. They help to build and strengthen our immune system. They maintain our cells at the cellular level. They do a lot of things. They even help to convert our food into energy. They, they play an important uh, role in a lot of the processes of our bodies. And so they're important, but we get most of our vitamins through the foods that we eat. So here's my tablespoon of honey. I'm gonna put this in here. And, um, and so that's a good thing, but sometimes we need to supplement because sometimes our diets might be um, maybe not as good as they should be, or like when we're on vacation or something, sometimes we're not feeling really well and we need something to boost what we need, uh, of the nutrients that we have. Um, sometimes we just, um, we just need an extra bit of nutrition. And so, um, and so that's another reason why we need to add uh, vitamins to our diet occasionally. Um, or just be more intentional about what we use. And so um, there's two different types of vitamins, fat-soluble vitamins and water-soluble vitamins. Now, fat-soluble vitamins are vitamins A, D, E, and K. I'm adding one teaspoon lemon juice to my uh, saucepan right now. 
all right? So vitamins A, D, E, and K, and because they're fat soluble, that means they're stored in our body's fat tissues. Um, our, and so um, they're stored, actually they're saved there for later when our body needs them, vitamin A, D, E, and K. And so that means if we have too many of them in our diet, we actually can, um, can cause a problem because we can build up too much because it's storable nut nutrients. The other vitamins, water-soluble vitamins, are those that um, our body, let me get this going here, that are those that are, they're vitamins that our body cannot store. And so we need a regular supply of those. If we have too many of those water-soluble vitamins in our diet, they go right through us. They just kind of pass on through. And so we need to make sure we're getting a constant, regular supply of nutrients, of those um, water-soluble nutrients. Okay, so what I've done here so far is I have added a um, third a cup of water to a tablespoon of honey. This is to sweeten it up a bit. And then I'm adding a teaspoon of lemon juice. Now you can double, triple this recipe. I'm making a small amount because I just want, it's easier to, to make it in a shorter amount of time. And then I'm using a whisk just to mix it all together and I'm gonna put it on the burner right here. And this burner, um, is, I'm just having it on like a medium, medium low, just till it gets warm. I don't want it to get boiling necessarily. Let's see, there we go. I'll leave it there for just a few minutes. I don't want it to get boiling, but I do want it to get hot. Um, and so we're going to leave it there for just a couple of seconds. We are going to make vitamin C gummies because vitamin C is a very important vitamin that helps build our immune system. And this is something that everybody's talking about nowadays. We've got to have our vitamin C. And sometimes there's vitamin C chewable tablets. You can get vitamin C swallowable tablets. You can really get a lot of vitamin C just from your, for your food. Uh, strawberries have vitamin C, oranges, all citrus fruits have vitamin C. And, um, but sometimes when you're not feeling well, it's good to get a boost of extra vitamin C. And so this, this recipe is something you can, again, modify it. You can crush up any other kind of vitamins you wanted into a powder and mix them into this recipe when I mix in my vitamin C powder. What we're gonna do is I've got the lemon juice, which adds a little bit of vitamin C. As it's heating up, it's gonna break down a little bit because temperature actually breaks down some uh, chemicals. And so um, I don't wanna heat it up too hot. But I'm also gonna add a packet of this emergency. Okay, and this is something that maybe some of your kids might not wanna take if they need it, but they'll take it in a gummy. And so this is a good way to get it inside of them. And so sometimes gummies are just fun to have. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and let's see, let me see how this is going. It's heating up a little bit more. Let me stir it around a bit. Little bit more. Okay, so while we're waiting, um, understand that our bodies cannot make uh, vitamins and so or most of these vitamins and so we have to get them in our diet and so it's helpful to know which vitamins benefit us um, when we need an extra boost and so that's why I think vitamin C is a good one to talk about again if you don't feel like like you want to use this stuff that's processed you can you can get vitamin C tablets you can um, just add lots and lots of extra lemon juice to your um, to your gummies that might be a little bit tart more tart um, but that's okay too, it's fine. You can actually use a different kind of sweetener if you don't wanna use honey. Uh, there's lots of recipes out there, but this is just one simple one. And so um, now that we have it pretty warm, I can feel it's nice and warm now, I'm gonna go ahead and take it off the burner. So you want it warm, not boiling, but warm, okay? And then when you do that, we're gonna slowly add, actually before we add, yeah, let's add the, um, the emergency powder. This is when you would add the vitamins to your um, solution, and we're gonna whisk that in with a small whisk. All right, and emergency um, and other um, similar types of vitamin boosts, they kind of, um, eff they're effervescent, they bubble a little bit, and that's okay, just whisk that in. That carbon dioxide's gonna bubble off and that's fine. We want it to get nice and dissolved. And then what we're gonna do, here's the major ingredient here. We're gonna use unflavored gelatin. Unflavored gelatin will gel just like Jello does, and that is how um, we get this stuff to become like a gummy. I didn't get my gummies. I made some ahead of time, so I'm gonna have to run, get them out of the fridge, and bring them back to you to show it to you. But what we need is about a tablespoon of unflavored gelatin. These packets, I got some in packet form, and there's a tablespoon exactly in here. But you can you can buy this stuff in bulk. Um, add it slowly, not the whole thing at one time, and whisk it because we don't want it to clump. You can kind of see that there. 
and I'm whisking more. This is a chemical reaction. We talked about chemical reactions before, haven't we? Okay, I got a little bit more to add. And so the gelatin is going to dissolve. And then we want to put it in molds and um, stick it in the freezer for a little bit. Now, if you happen to have gummy bear molds, that'd be perfect. You can buy, I know they sell um, silicone gummy bear molds. I don't have any of those. I thought it'd be great to have some of those, but I don't. What I, the only silicone mold, and silicone is a, is a good mold because it's easier to pop them out. Um, I do have these ice cube silicone molds. You can see how it's kind of mushy, and because of that, um, it's easier to pop it out when it's um, gelled. But if you don't have those, you can use a clear glass pan. Um, you, you don't even have to um, grease it, but you might want to put a light coating of oil in it just so that it pops out more easily. Then you can cut it into cubes. And so that's, what, that's actually what I did because these ice cubes are gigantic. I'm only going to fill them just part way and then one, and stick them in the freezer. You want to stick them in the freezer for um, about half an hour and then pull them out. You don't want them to freeze into ice, but then you pull them out and you can cut them into cubes and, and put them in the refrigerator um, for however many days, maybe about four or five days they'll last. And so um, you can have these as a nice, um, fun energy boost. Again, if you have silicone molds, candy molds, um, those shapes will work as well. And so it's difficult to show you. You can see how I've got these in there. I'm going to, so I'm gonna take these, stick them in the freezer, and I'm gonna pull out the ones that I just got. Stand by. I'm still coming. You can hear me. And here I am back again. Okay, there we go. All right, so I made these earlier because I didn't want to wait half an hour in the fridge. And you can pop them out of those shapes that I had. And I'm going to cut this one and this one into little cubes like this. And you have these amazing and, and not really quite tasty gummy cubes. You see that? Isn't that fun? It's a nice gummy cube full of nutrition. I know what goes in it. And so it's something that I can make for fun with the kids and then they'll have fun eating them. And they're yummy. They're really good. All right. Well, I was sad that I didn't have any gummy bears, gummy bear molds. Um, and so I thought, because we always like to do a craft together, we would make our own little bears. So let me swallow my vitamin here, move everything over. And we're going to make just really simple, fun little bears. It's a fun craft. I made a couple of them earlier. Look how cute these guys are. Aren't they amazing? They're just so fun. And it really is simple, simple ingredients. No sewing necessary. Something really fun with the kids. And it's basically using a washcloth and three rubber bands. And that's it. You can add more embellishments like a ribbon to the neck. You can, um, I embroidered a couple little eyes right there. You can stick some googly eyes on there or hot glue some googly eyes. And you've got these cute little teddy bears. And you, um, you don't have to necessarily use a washcloth. This was kind of a, this was a tiny little rag that we had. Um, you want something that's got finished edges though, or that doesn't fray. So you could, you could even do this with felt, if you have felt. Um, you want a square, this, this is a big one here, um, but you, want, you can even use one that's maybe, I don't know, maybe six inches by six inches. Something square is ideal, okay? And so it's very simple what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Um, you take one end and you're gonna just start rolling into the center so you get to that point. All right, you see that? I got one roll up to the center and then I'm going to roll the other side into the center. All right, you guys following me here? All right, so I have the roll from, from into the center from both sides, okay? And you can see where the seam is in the middle here where they've rolled to the center. Then you're gonna pick it up we're gonna fold it in half so the bump that you can see the center crease or whatever you call that, that cleft section here, okay? Then you wanna slightly offset it a little bit, okay? Slightly offset it and turn this back piece around. Let me do that again, okay? We've got our, our rolls here, fold it in half, slightly offset it, and then this back piece, we want this center bump here to be turned around, so we're gonna split, we're gonna flip it around like this. So now you can see that we've got the bump here and the bump here, okay? Now once we've done that, this one's gonna actually, this front piece is going to actually unroll just a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna take one of my rubber bands and I'm going to put it right here 
and I've got the neck. And can you see how I have two little arms and two little legs? Let me do that really quickly one more time so you can see it. And we'll do the ears next, okay? All right, starting from scratch. Roll to the center, both sides. Okay, got that? Fold it in half. Slightly offset it like this. This back piece we're going to flip around so that we have the two rolls on this side and the two rolls both facing forward. Then we're going to unroll this front piece a little bit like this and hold it in place, grab my rubber band and wrap it around. All right, I did that a little fast, but let me, let me adjust it now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna adjust it so you guys can see what I'm doing here. All right, can you see we've got the arms and the legs kind of adjusted a little bit? And now we gotta make the ears. So I'm gonna take this, this over here, I'm gonna take a rubber band and I'm gonna pinch off a piece right here, just like this. Pinch off a piece and do it in thirds and do the same thing over here, kind of like ponytails, poofy ponytails, right? Look at that, is that not the cutest? And then you can take a ribbon and tie it around his neck to cover up that rubber band. And these are just really fun. You guys can, um, you can make these as gifts. You can play with them. You can have your older ones, make it for the younger ones. You can make a whole host of these guys. Let me get that little bow rearranged here. He's not as cute without the bow fixed. There we go. Tie this one like that. I'd have to cut off the end of this piece, it's too long, but can you see how cute that is? It's a cute little teddy bear. All right, and again, you can stick some googly eyes on here. You can embroider this if you want. You can hot glue it in place if you want to make it permanent or stitch it in place. But this is a no-so, fun little craft that you can do with your kids and then give them their gummies and let them chew the gummy bears and have fun with that. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope it made sense and you could see what we were doing. Try the gummy bears out. Look for a recipe that might suit your needs or what you have. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I look forward to coming back again and we'll talk about some more fun stuff. As long as we are in quarantine, I wanna to try to keep doing this kind of stuff just to give you something to watch, something to enjoy with your kids and have fun fun with this rather than um, build up the stress and not know what to do. So thank you so much for joining me. If you've missed any of the videos, they should be on a playlist here at the Hip Homeschool Moms page. All of the videos are on my YouTube channel, Sherry Seligson, and, um, or you can find me at apologia.com. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope to see you soon.